having a problem with the charging system on your Ford equipped vehicle? Does your battery light inadvertently come on and then go back off again? You can tell you have a 6G alternator by the circular gray bearing cover on the back. Here's what's wrong with it. The brush is wearing a groove on the bottom of the slip ring. This usually occurs after high mileage, but it can occur in as little as 80,000. To do a repair, all you need is a new voltage regulator brush holder assembly and a new slip ring. The tools you need are a 200 watt soldering gun, half inch impact with a 15 16 socket, a Torx size T20 and a 5 16 socket with a quarter inch drive ratchet, a hammer, a Dremel, and for the Dremel, a pack of reinforced carbide cutoff wheels. Most of these tools are available at a Walmart. To begin the repair process, scribe a visible paint mark down the side of the alternator. Then remove the three 5 16 heads bolts holding the alternator together. Wrap a rag around the pulley or wear a glove. And with the 15 16 socket and half inch impact, remove the nut on the shaft. <laughs> Holding the back half with one hand, tap off the front half. Remove the three screws with the T20 heads holding the voltage regulator on. Pull straight up on the voltage regulator quickly. Apply a penetrating oil to the shaft and bearing area. Hold on to the rectifier with one hand and tap the front half off with a hammer by tapping at 180 degree intervals. Pull the rotor out of the stator. A two jaw puller. Use the two jaw puller to remove the slip ring end bearing from the shaft. Remove one of the seals from the rear bearing with a sharp knife or a razor blade and install two drops of oil into the bearing itself. Reinstall the seal. This is the part where we need to use the Dremel and the carbide cutoff wheel. You'll notice the raised up area on both sides of the rotor that covers the wires coming out of the slip ring. This is what needs to be removed. We need to use the Dremel and the cutoff wheel to remove this area right here by cutting lines right where the red lines are on both sides. Before you perform this next procedure be sure and wear safety glasses. Here you can see where the metal has been removed so that the wire in the insulation has been exposed. Next we need to take the Dremel and make a cut right here to the right of the riser. There's the other side. You can see where the Dremel has cut through and removed the loop that was once there. And we need to make a cut with the Dremel also right here. These are the two wires that are coming down from the two slip rings. 
make a cut right here so that you don't disturb the vertical part of the wiring. Here you can see where we've made the vertical cut with the Dremel to separate the wire from the riser. The plastic insulator un underneath the riser should still be intact and not broken or cracked. Now you'll notice the horizontal gap in between the plastic on the slip ring and the top part of the rotor in this area right here. It's on both sides. Tap two screwdrivers 180 degrees apart underneath the openings and pry up on them. Here's a shot of the rotor that's had the slip ring removed and cleaned away. The next thing we need to do is clean up the risers and get them ready for soldering. You need to take either a wire toothbrush or a small piece of sandpaper and clean up these areas right here where it's going to be soldered. Put a small amount of grease all the way around on the knurled part of the shaft. Look at the rotor from above and carefully line up the slip ring so that the legs of the slip, slip ring go down in between the grooves. If the grooves aren't wide enough take the Dremel and cut them again to make them wider because this has to line up perfectly and you can't have the white plastic breaking by nicking one of these. Take a 15 millimeter socket and tap lightly on the top of the slip ring. Stop tapping the slip ring onto the shaft when the bottom of the slip ring is about 1 64th away from the metal part of the rotor. If you want to, you could slide a piece of paper under there and then stop tapping just where there would be enough to slide the piece of paper or thin piece of cardboard out. But the point is, don't tap down so far on the slip ring so that the plastic white plastic part of the slip ring becomes cracked or broken because the integrity of the job will suffer. Wrap the copper lead of the slip ring around the riser of the existing wire as shown. When soldering, contact both pieces that need to be soldered equally so that the surface area of the tip of the gun is equal on both parts. Notice how the, all the gaps are filled up with solder. Notice how where the copper lead wraps around the riser and contacts itself creates a line where there's a seam and there's solder also on that seam. Inspect your work from the side view to make sure that there is no solder dripping down or has dried where it would be contacting any metal surfaces. Put the rotor back in the bearing in the front plate. Use the half inch impact with the 15 16 socket to tighten the pulley. Hold the pulley with a glove or a rag. Find the yellow mark and tap the stator rectifier assembly back down into the front plate. There are three places that need to be meticulously cleaned with a wire toothbrush or a small piece of sandpaper. Once these three places are cleaned and shiny, take a small amount of either dielectric grease or white lithium grease and put a thin layer on all three spots.
The brushes are held back in the voltage regulator by a retainer pin. Set the regulator in place. Put the three screws in. Tighten them down snug with the T20. Then pull the retainer pin so that the brushes can contact the slip ring. The T20 screw should only be tightened down snugly at first. Then go around in a clockwise pattern and tighten each one one quarter to one half turn until they're fully tightened. Take the dust cap off the tolerance ring. Place the tolerance ring in the rear plate, noting the three slots and the three teeth in the plastic tolerance ring. Place a drop of oil on the shaft and spread it around. Then place a drop of oil on the inside of the tolerance ring and spread it around. Locate the yellow mark for alignment. Set the rear plate back on. Put the three bolts in and tighten them up finger tight. Set the bearing back on. Set a 3 8 socket on top of the bearing and tap it down in. Finish tightening up the bolts. Put a light layer of RTV and then snap the bearing cap back on.